welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. Today I am going to be starting what I am calling pain relief yoga. I have found some yoga poses online and through Pinterest that are supposed to help with different parts of your body with chronic pain. If you have seen a couple of my previous videos, I've mentioned that I deal with chronic joint pain mostly, but it does affect nerves, muscles, there's fatigue, all that not so good stuff. But I am hoping that if I can do these yoga poses continuously for 30 days to see if I can become more flexible, see if it actually helps with pain relief. So I've picked out, I think about 12 poses from a few different sites and charts that I've seen on Pinterest. I will do my best to find the original website and link it below. I will see what I can find, but so the poses might have different names than what I give you. That's just what I found. I don't know very much about yoga. This should be fun. I just got a yoga mat yesterday. So <laughs> we'll see how this goes. I'm going to head downstairs and get started. Remember, please, this is my first day. I am not sure how well I am going to do with these moves, but we'll see how it goes. Also, I am sorry, but my kitchen is the only place big enough to film this, so please enjoy the view. my first day of pain relief yoga. Um, as you can probably tell from some of the clips, I wasn't quite able to complete them all. I found that I've always known my, um, I don't do a very good job of stretching out my hamstrings very much. So the ones that involved stretching your legs out pretty far, I was not able to do those all the way. Um, the one where you're you have your legs stretched out and your arms are your arms are supposed to be on the floor and holding your foot and I could only get one elbow on the floor so I'm hoping that through doing this continuously um, for the 30 days and afterwards if it's still working for me I'm hoping to become even more flexible and be able to actually get both my elbows on the floor for that one. A couple others that I found kind of painful actually um, just I think doing anything that your body's not used to is maybe going to be a little bit painful or you might be sore afterwards. So we'll see. I, I mean, it's the first day. It's too soon to tell anything, but I'm going to do this every day. I'm hoping to get started now. I'm a teacher, so we're still on winter break and I want to incorporate this now while I have a bunch of time off so that by the time work starts up again, I'll just be able to like do it automatically and it won't be too much trouble to kind of integrate it into my everyday routine. I did also find that I had trouble remembering to keep, as I'm doing right now, you are supposed to have good posture while you do yoga, um, well, while you do anything, but 
remembering to keep my postures posture posture my posture straight while um, doing the yoga was hard a couple of times so that's something I'm gonna try to be more mindful of too is to keep my back straight I think that helps extend things further and if you're just hunched over while you're trying to stretch that doesn't work great probably so I'll check in throughout and I will see you at the end of the 30 days with a progress report. Okay, so it's been about two weeks since I started doing the yoga. I have been doing it every day, but I haven't been great about doing it at the same time every day. I'm not really sure how important that is, but when you're trying to become more flexible, I kind of feel like if you let it go longer, like if you don't do it every 24 hours, if you're kind of letting it go longer in between, that you might lose some of like the elasticity that you gained. I don't really know. But, um, I have noticed a little bit of progress. There are a couple of the poses that I couldn't even like get close to touching the floor that I'm doing a little bit better on. There are still a couple that are pretty painful for me. There was a couple at the start that were really bad and they kind of continue to cause problems for me and I don't know if that's just my body still getting used to them or I think I mentioned before that I have um, my hips are a really big problem area just pain wise and so I don't know if some of the like moves that are called hip openers if some of those are just always going to be painful for me so I'm continuing to do them not to put myself through the pain but just like seeing what I can handle to see in case it's helpful if my body does get used to it over time. I really like doing it after my workouts. It's been a really nice way to cool down which is something I was not good at before. I would just work out and then stop and not really stretch like you should before and after but I always stretched before but I wasn't great about doing it afterwards. So that's been a really nice way to just kind of cool down and chill out afterwards. It's a good start. I'm back to work in a few days. I will see how well I do incorporating that into the routine. Usually when I can make myself, I've been pretty lazy the last couple days in doing the yoga and the workouts in the evening, but usually I like to just get up, do it first thing and start my day. And I always feel really great those days. So I am mid yoga routine so I'm a tad out of breath post workout but um, I did want to mention that I'm having trouble too with some of the yoga poses that some of them were marked as <laughs> whew, breathing as um, holding them for a certain amount of breaths and some are marked as a number of seconds and I have found that switching between the two gets complicated for me because I think especially with the moves that are harder or like this when I'm doing it just after a workout I'm tired so it's I'm breathing quicker and you're trying to slow down because it's the breathing that really matters but then if I have to switch to something that is a number of seconds and I'm counting seconds of seconds to sit there and count all of it so what I will probably do is just kind of figure out how many seconds is a breath for me and then take those poses and just hold them for that many breaths. Um, I think that'll make it easier for me. It might be easier for you. If you want to try these, just the switching back and forth isn't really working for me. Okay, so it has been more than 30 days actually. I'm filming this a few days after the 30 days was up. It was also more like 32 because I did really well with the yoga, remembering to do it, um, much better than I expected. But there were a couple days where I just got home from work and just completely spaced and forgot to do it. So I did, the point was to do it for an extended period of time, but I just had the 30 days in my head. So I tacked on a couple at the end. I am pleasantly surprised with the results. I kind of really wasn't expecting much 
honestly, I wasn't sure if 30 days was enough. I've never done really very much yoga at all, but nothing extended. I didn't know how long it would take for my body to get used to some of the poses. There were a few that I just kind of felt like weren't really doing much for me. It did start to feel a bit more like a chore doing it every day, including all of the poses. I kind of wanted to whittle it down, but I did do them all. But there are a few that I really like doing. I do still really enjoy doing them after my workouts. Um, it's really nice to know there are a few that stretch stretch that stretch out different parts of my back and my hips and it's really nice that I know that I can do those now if that part of me is sore I want to keep doing them to try to keep those parts of my body from getting as sore as they do I did see improvement with two of the moves so the where you lay with one leg straight out behind you and one curled up those were really, really painful for me in the beginning, and I just started to notice within the last week or so that those are not nearly as painful for my hips, so I'm definitely going to keep doing those. I might actually try to do those every day, even if I don't do the whole stint yoga routine, just because I'm kind of hoping that maybe those will help. And also... The pose where you stand with your legs crossed, that I saw the most improvement. I can actually touch my fingers to the ground significantly now with both legs. So I do know that my legs are a little bit more flexible, which is cool. I'm hoping to continue that some more. Overall, like I said, I'm happy with this. I was pleasantly surprised. I do want to keep doing it. It was difficult to find specific poses for me because these were all for sciatic pain or this kind of pain but there weren't like I have fibromyalgia yoga so if there's a yoga for that let me know I also couldn't find the ones that were for neck pain weren't really targeting the area where I have neck pain so those didn't really seem to do anything with me so if you know something that stretches back here. I get headaches pretty bad back here. Please let me know. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I think yoga approved. I don't know how to end this video, so I'm going to film a different outro later. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. See ya!